Recording in progress. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the Whitehall City Council meeting of January 3rd, 2023. If you would, please join us for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ms. Ogg, would you please call the roll? Connison. Present. Cantor. Present. Pat. Present. Smith. Present. Bailey. Dixon. Here. Elmore, President Potter. Present. Mr. Uh, President, I'd like to make a motion to excuse the absent members, please. Second, second, please. There's been a motion by Mr. Cantor, second by Mr. Dixon, to excuse the absent members. Is there any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Connison. Yes. Cantor. Yes. Peck. Yes. Smith. Yes. Dixon. Yes. The absent members have been excused. At uh, this time, we have the approval of the December 20th, 2022 agenda and regular meeting minutes. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. There's been a motion by Ms. Connison, second by Mr. Cantor, for the approval of the December 2022 agenda and regular meeting minutes. Is there any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Connison? Yes. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Smith? Yes. Dixon? Yes. The minutes have been approved. If this point, we have got a special presentation with uh, Superintendent Wells to talk about the MLK Scholarship Breakfast. So if you... Thank you, Mr. President. I am a total substitute for Shannon Sorrell um, in her absence. <laughs> if you all could just imagine for a moment that I am her... We got that figure right now. I want you to know this. You know, so much. Much. No, you gotta get a little taller. She is, she, I, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Just a, a tad. Um, no. She's a little bit under the weather, so I let her know uh, that I would speak on her behalf as it relates to Parks and Rec and their participation um, in the Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast in Whitehall. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to give a little bit of historical context um, so that members of council as well as the members of the public recognize Martin Luther King holiday in the state of Ohio was signed into law back in 1975 in the state of Ohio. In fact, we were trailblazers at the time. The first African-American elected senator in the state of Ohio, Bill Bowen, was the one that proffered that legislation. I believe it was Senate Bill 18 back in 1975. The United States caught up to that in the Reagan administration in 1983, and then we actually started recognizing it in 1986. Now, I say all of that to say that this council, by Ordinance 96-2018, gave Whitehall the ability to start recognizing the Martin Luther King holiday back in 2018, and we've been doing it ever since. Since then, Council Member Elmore and myself, we initiated the first ever Martin Luther King recognition, and we always wanted to do it the Whitehall way, because we do things different here. It was not just a Martin Luther King celebration, it was a celebration of one of the most important assets that we have in our, in our community, which is our kids. And so we decided to do a scholarship. And we had a scholarship uh, recognition. Uh, the kids came out. We would choose a theme from Martin Luther King's history, whether or not it be a book, whether or not it be a speech. This year, we have chosen another speech. And Superintendent Wells will tell you a little bit more about that. And what happened is we had the pandemic, and we were not able to do it. Um, this is where Superintendent or Parks and Rec Director uh, Shannon Sorrell comes in. She contacts me uh, sometime around November, October, saying, hey, I would really like to do something, highlight our parks, what can we do? And she gave me carte blanche kind of idea to, to do something. And let me just tell you this, our Parks and Rec Director, I don't know every last one of them, but I, I have enough confidence to say we have probably one of the best Parks and Rec directors in the state of Ohio, probably in the region. Her ideas, her staff, the support that she has is just phenomenal. And 
she jumped in with both legs, feet, hands, and everything and said, let's bring back the Martin Luther King uh, recognition, but let's make it into something bigger. And therefore, it's now at the YMCA. Parks and Rec was gracious enough to provide, and they had it in their, in their budget to assist with the breakfast. Uh, the breakfast will be January the 16th, Martin Luther King Day. Registration begins at 9 o'clock. There's a form that individuals can go to to pre-register, um, and that's it. The theme of this, this year is bring us the ballot, give us the ballot. And one of my favorite speeches um, from Martin Luther, or one of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther King is about the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And so that is one of the greatest uh, things and one of the greatest aspects of providing justice by way of a scholarship to our young people at a minimum of 500. I've already had um, additional contributions that are being pledged by anonymous donors uh, that don't want to be recognized publicly, but somehow they will um, in some kind of indirect way. Um, just can't help it. And then Superintendent Wells uh, was brought in uh, to the conversation and she and her staff have been amazing without taking any more of her thunder. I'll let her tell you what she's done as the superintendent to encourage some of the kids uh, to participate in the scholarship this year. Thank, Thank you. you, City Attorney Bivis. Thank you so much for having me, President Potter and members of council. We are super excited. I just cannot say thank you enough to the collaboration and the partnership that we're currently experiencing and the opportunity for this scholarship. So new this year, um, in collaboration with City Attorney Bivens, our team has decided again with the give us the ballot option or theme to challenge our kids with the idea of how is this message relevant today and how do you get involved in the political process even now as a young person. And so we are super excited to put that challenge in front of our kids and new this year, along with either giving a speech of some sort or writing of some sort, we're encouraging our young people to apply in a way that manifests their personality and their strengths. So they may do artwork, they may do a speech, they may do a song, they may do, do a writing, but they are able to apply based on their own personality and put their own touch on it. So we're really excited to be, have, be, able, to be able to open that up to them. Um, so far we have put the word out to our young people, our counselors have put it out, our art teachers have put it out, and our social studies teachers have put it out. And so we're going to do another push when they return um, on Thursday to get in. So we're excited about what the kids will come up with. We are proud of what they're going to come up with and just eternally grateful again for the partnership of working with you all. I'm excited. Um, ever since I've come to Whitehall, everything that the city of Whitehall has put on has been amazing. I've been highly impressed and this is, I'm sure, not going to be any, any different. So thank you so much for welcoming me to the district. Thank you for the opportunity to bless our young people with a scholarship and for such a meaningful message. So. Again, I thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be with you all. And just, again, thank you for the opportunity. Superintendent, thank you for coming thank out you. this evening and sharing yeah. thank with you us. So this is a wonderful, wonderful program. At this time, we'll now have our first poll public, and I would invite anybody to come forward. And, yeah, that'd be you. Uh, if you would, please state your name and address uh, for the record, and you'll have up to three minutes. So. Oh, about 20 minutes? <laughs> Paul Worth, 4483 San Jose Lane. Uh, I posted on Facebook the other day because unfortunately I had to scoop up another cat. I mean, I've lived in my house for 23 years, and this problem is getting way out of hand because I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. Two in within six months. The feral cat problem, I have to call them feral because across the street there's 10 living in a, in a garage. My neighbors across the street, every time I wake up, my dog going crazy, there's like six or seven out there. And they're just running wild. And thanks to Mr. Cameron who posted. He called me five minutes after I posted. He came over to the picture and did his job and got touch with Steve. I really appreciate that. But the, uh, you know, I was on the committee and went over to the charter review. And, I, you know, and, and then I also looked at the ordinances about animals and stuff about if you own animals, if you feed an animal, it's considered your animal. And with that many animals, they're being fed. So it's their animals, and we're only allowed three animals. The ordinance, if we have ordinances, they should be enforced. They're not being enforced because we have so many cats running this neighborhood. And I know that's not the only house. Another lady in the street over says there's a bunch living next door to her house. I mean, 
I understand there's a program in effect, but with all these, you know, cats just roaming free, I mean, I have to leash my dogs, tag my dogs, give my cat, my cat's got rabies shots, my dog's got rabies shots. You know, the people that are obeying the laws are being affected, getting diseases. I mean, my cat's got diabetes. I don't want my cat roaming out back with my dogs chasing cats out of our yard. And cats that have diseases doing stuff in my backyard and my cat getting sick and dying, I'm trying to keep him alive. He's 10 years old, he can't have no more diseases. And, uh, you know, it's just out of hand. So more has to be done. I mean, enforcement has to be implemented because I mean, I'm sorry, I, all I see is on Facebook is on our dog, dog, animal control being a dog warden. There's other animals out there that need, need to be taken care of, and this is a very serious problem. As you always put in your ordinances, it's a health and safety issue. So I hope you take this seriously and get health and safety foremost, because this is very diseases and all that stuff can very affect children and other, you know, animals. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Floyd Bivens, 4985 Rural Avenue, Whitehall, Ohio. Just for clarification um, for Mr. Bivens, can you talk just a little bit about um, the scholarship? How are they funded? Because this is not coming from Parks and Recs, because we've never done that before. It's come out of personal dollars, correct? And you're accepting donations from others who would like to donate, correct? May I? Yes, please. Um, just for the, I just want people to know that they can donate. So. Right. Right now, the, the scholarship is being funded uh, privately by myself and, uh, and Councilwoman uh, Lori Elmore, as well as other uh, private anonymous donors who don't want to be uh, named but will be recognized in some way. But if anyone would like to make um, a contribution, the minimum amount of the scholarship is $500 per, per student. Um, however, there have been, in the past years, we've given more because individuals have wanted to make donations. This year, we have the privilege, because of Superintendent Wells, the Whitehall Education Foundation is gracious enough to be the safe, they're going to safe keep the funds uh, for purposes of the scholarship. So if anybody wants to make a donation um, and add to it, all they would have to do is make the check payable to the Whitehall Education Foundation and they'll be able, they will get to the kids that are the scholarship award recipients. Do you have an address to the WEA? You can send that to our district office. Just send it to Tony on the road, okay. The admin building, okay. Uh, may I ask a question, please? Yes. Uh, and so you say $500 is a minimum amount, but so you're saying that anyone can donate any amount they can to the? To oh, to the scholarship, the scholarship. Yeah. absolutely. Any and all are accepted. <laughs> Yeah, any and all donations are accepted uh, for purposes of the scholarship. If, if the participants uh, are there, they know that they're going to at least get a scholarship at minimum of $500. If it turns into $750, if it turns into $1,000, then that's what they get. And how many do you give out? Two. Do you give out two? Okay, I thought so. Okay. Two. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Good question, Joy. Usually that's from her. Standing committee reports, we uh, did not meet on the 27th, so we do not have any reports this evening. Uh, officials reports, uh, <coughs> Mayor Maggard is not with us this evening, nor is uh, City Administrator Woodruff. Uh, we do have City Attorney Bivens. Thank you, Mr. President, members of council. Um, the City Attorney's Office uh, wrapped up uh, 2022, very busy year. Total year numbers for uh, 2022 was uh, 3,610 cases were handled in the Whitehall City Attorney's Office. In the month of December, uh, we handled about 239 cases in our mayor's court. Out of those 239 cases, only 21 of those were from Whitehall residents, so that's 8%. 8%. The total numbers out of all numbers for the Whitehall City Attorney's Office that were prosecuted, there were only 624 cases that were committed of a criminal nature by Whitehall residents in the whole year of 22. So that's about 13%. Um, no, I'm sorry, 17%. Thank you for nudging me on that. <laughs> I had to look at my notes. Um, it's 17%. Um, but 
taking into consideration the size of our city, the geographics, the numbers, the fact that we're a growing city, um, those numbers are, are small in comparison to other municipalities. Um, and I would put Whitehall's numbers um, up against any municipality as far as safety of the residents that live here. Um, so ultimately with our uh, police uh, department and their initiatives as far as making Whitehall safer um, for any of the out, outside residents, anybody knows and you all that represent your constituency knows that if you live in Whitehall, you raise your kids in Whitehall, uh, you intend to have neighbors in Whitehall, they're not committing crimes um, that are going to cause you harm. Um, at least on a very at a very low percentage rate. So I just wanted council to know those numbers. So once again, 3,610 cases, 624 of those were committed by of a criminal nature were committed by Whitehall residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Auditor Quitzel. Thank you, Mr. President, members of council. Uh, the auditor's office is working diligently on trying to close December 2022 and year end. So uh, I don't have solid figures for you, but the uh, report that I ran uh, at the end of last week showed that uh, for our income tax revenue, uh, we were at about 99% of what was budgeted. Mm -hmm. And on the income tax refunds, we were at just 70%. So we, uh, we fared a lot better than we expected. So, but um, should have, once, once we get everything closed, should come back to you with a uh, report with some solid numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director of Public Safety, Greg is not with us this evening. Uh, Treasurer Alexander. Thank you, Mr. President and members of council. I uh, just want to wish everybody a happy new year once again, and I have no official report tonight. Thank you. Uh, there have been no official reports filed in the council office since our last meeting. Uh, under communications, petitions, and claims, we have one item, which is the agenda for the January 5th, 2023 Whitehall Planning Commission meeting. Ms. Ogg, would you please call roll as to whether each member of council was given a copy of each item of legislation listed on the agenda prior to the meeting, including any add-ons? Thomason? Yes. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Smith? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Thank you. Uh, under third reading, we have one piece of legislation, Ordinance 92-2022, amending Ordinance Number 52-2011 <coughs> to update the tax exemptions available within the Hamilton Road Community Reinvestment Area. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce uh, Ordinance 92-2022 and move for the adoption, please. There has been a motion by Mr. Cantor, second by Ms. Connison, to introduce Ordinance 92-2022 and for its adoption. Is there any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Connison? Yes. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Smith? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Ordinance 92-2022 has been adopted. Under second reading, we have got no legislation this evening. And under first reading, we have one item, which will be read by title only, and that's Resolution 1-2023 levying special assessments for property maintenance at several locations in the city of Whitehall, Ohio, addresses and parcel numbers as provided within the text of this resolution, certifying such costs to the Franklin County Auditor to be assessed against such property and declaring an emergency. This now brings us to our second poll pub public of the evening. Same rules apply. If you choose to come forward, please state your name, address, and three minutes. Okay. Uh, Community Day Board. I always look to you, Karen, don't I? No, you don't. <laughs> I haven't even set. WCCA is going to be meeting shortly to set the 2023 um, event. So if you've got some new ideas, we would love to see you at our next meeting, second Monday of every month over at the Whitehall YMCA, 630. Thank you. Anything else from Council for Community Day 4? Nothing. I figured you were going to talk about the Easter. Scholarship breakfast? Yeah. <laughs> 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 January 16th? 9-11, right? 9 a.m. to 11? Yeah. Okay. Well, that, thank you. <laughs> we'll then roll on to polling council. Ms. Connison. Wow. Right back at you. Right back at me. Thank you uh, <coughs> for coming <clears throat> back tonight. And uh, um, it's always good to see you, whether there's an 
issue or not an issue. Uh, always good to see you and thank you, uh, Cherie. Also, um, for anybody that did not go to the breakfast with Santa, um, Superintendent Wells makes a mean pancake. <laughs> did she cook? She did. She did. I know. Oh, I know. Thank you for viewing. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cantor, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I do know that you cook because I was there watching you and I was serving as well. Thanks everybody for uh, watching and coming in. Greatly appreciated, um, Madam Superintendent Wells, for, for visiting tonight. It's, uh, it's an honor to have you at our meeting and I thank you. Paul Werther, I feel you, I know. That's why I came out there and I'm very, very sorry. Hopefully something can, can come about that. I hope we do have the, uh, the uh, trap, neuter, and release. And I know this works, it works over a period of time. The disease is a different aspect, what, you, what you're talking about, and, and I know where you're coming from. Um, and I'll stay on top of that for you, you can bet. Joy Bevins, thanks for coming up and talking again, directing everything to our fabulous <laughs> city attorney. So, not a problem. I'm going to pay for all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you how your boy Michael was, but I won't do that. Mr. Brown's out. Good to see you, sir. Always. Always good to see you back. I'm glad you're doing better, so. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Miss Head, what do you have for us? Apparently nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you everybody watching from home and those that came in. Um, thank you, Attorney Bivens, for stepping in for Shannon tonight. She did a great job. Um, thank you, Shuri, Superintendent Shuri Wells, for coming and speaking on it. I'm really excited for the event and also Joy for filling, filling in the missing pieces. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Paul, for getting up and sharing your concern with us. I appreciate you bringing it to us as well. Um, and that's kind of all the time. So everybody, I hope you have a good night. Okay. Miss Smith was not last this evening, which is a real no, complaint. So <laughs> oh. I think big things. I like to be last. <laughs> I just say everyone else said it. Um, thank you for everybody watching at home or for those that came in. Uh, thank you for sharing your concerns, as everyone else has said, Mr. Order. Uh, thank you, City Attorney Gibbons and Superintendent Wells for sharing about the Martin Luther King breakfast. I'm very excited to attend to that. Um, I'm excited to see what the students present. I think that is so cool. Uh, um, happy New Year. Spent a lot of time reflecting, and I look forward to a new year. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Dixon. Thank you, everyone, for coming, both uh, in here and at home, uh, viewing on Facebook. Um, happy New Year to everyone. Nice to see Mr. Alexander. It's been a little while, but uh, always a pleasure. A um, uh, couple things. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Superintendent Wells for coming in to speak tonight. Appreciate that. We've not met, uh, and I'm going to give you my card afterwards uh, and just say hello and shake your hand. I've heard nothing but uh, terrific things. Um, the MLK Scholarship Program. I want to uh, send out my apologies ahead of time because I have some medical things coming up uh, around the end of this month, and money's going to be tight. So I'm unable to participate in it in any way. But I want to say how terrific I think the program is. I'm glad it's back on track. Uh, I hope that uh, next year I'm not in the same situation and that I can uh, be of uh, uh, help uh, then too. I think it's amazing and terrific. Um, Paul Werther, I've known you 54 years. Since we were little, little kids. And uh, I want to thank you for coming in and expressing how you feel. And, you know, you know, I, I was no stranger to that podium either, but uh, I think that it's always a terrific thing when uh, citizens come forward and, and speak uh, their mind. Uh, I don't know what to say about the, uh, the issue. Um, I mean, I have six deer in my backyard that eat my plants that, you know, whether there's disease or not, I don't know. But so, there are issues, and I know that people go around and uh, uh, trap and uh, spay and neuter and release, and I think that's terrific. Uh, so I leave it to others with better uh, information regarding that topic to, to help solve it. Uh, but I'm sorry for the problems that you're having. Um, I think that may be it, and there were no tears on my part tonight, so I would like to. <laughs> it's a new year. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dixon. That's it. Thank you. Uh, I, too, would like to thank uh, Superintendent Wells for coming out and uh, share your excitement for the Martin Luther King Jr. 
breakfast, of course, with uh, Mr. Bivens <coughs> and, and, and Joy. I also think it's a wonderful thing, and I think it'll be quite uh, interesting and fascinating to see what the uh, young people come up with. So, like, and I like the, the, the fact that they can express themselves in a wide variety of ways, so each one can go on their strength, and I think that just makes it a stronger program. So, my hat's off to you. Uh, Mr. Werther, thank you for coming as well. And I, like Wes and my colleagues have said, I hope that uh, a resolution can be determined to get that straightened out, because I can only imagine how frustrating that is, especially for folks that are following the law and doing the right thing, and then seeing others uh, abuse it, which just it is not right. So, um, like again, I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year. And um, Mr. President, uh, motion to adjourn, please. Second. There's been a motion wow. by Mr. Cantor, second by Mr. Dixon to adjourn. Any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Connison? Yes. Cantor? Yes. Peck? Yes. Smith? Yes. Dixon? Yes. We are adjourned at 725. Okay. So, we just going to get that there. I am. You're saying? <laughs>